Peter Elides with you. This is Stock Market Cycles YouTube update for Tuesday, January 10th. I do an update every market day for my subscribers. And by the way, if you're interested in viewing that daily update on a trial basis, we'll have information just below the video and a link to the website where you can get a 14-day free trial to our software and or our daily video updates. I think if you have anything to do with the market, short-term, long-term, you will find them very helpful. Um, I can't prove that to you. I can show you some of our recent updates. I think we've done maybe five or six of them in the last six months. And I've got little arrows here as to where they were done, okay? This one was done right here, and it was a very bullish update saying, in effect, there are no further downside projections, and we would have to rally for a few weeks, if not a couple of months, in order to put ourselves in a position where the market could give even lower projections. Okay, That's the update that was done here. In fact, we did a YouTube update that was done on an interview that we did with Neil Cavuto on Fox News. On June 16th, the exact day of the low. That video is available on our YouTube channel. This is the day it was done, okay? It was, I, I don't know whether it was fortuitous or what it was, but we ended up, remember, we're listed as perennial bears. Everyone said, oh, Eliades, he's bearish all the time. On this day right here, I appeared on national television with my old buddy, Neil Cavuto, and said, I'm going to disappoint you, Neil, because I'm bullish for at least a few weeks, if not a couple of months. And this was the result right here, okay? We did another update right here, okay? It was a bearish one. There you go. Market topped a couple of days later. Another update here. It was a bearish one. Market topped out two trading days later. Did another update here. Our most recent update saying virtually everyone knows that the month of December is always bullish, or is it? Or will it be this year? And of course, our big case was it would not be this year, which was 2022. And this was the result right here for December, okay? And this is today right here. We're doing another update. Do you want to know what we're going to say? I'm going to show you price projections, which is our specialité de la maison. That's what we live and breathe with, our price projections for the market indexes. But before I do that, I want to show you a technical indicator that has had fabulous success this year. Let's go to it. The dark broad line here is the VIX index, volatility index, okay? Closing prices and closed by Bollinger Bands we're not going to use those. They're not important to us for this particular item. But there are a few things I want you to notice here, okay? Interrelationships between the VIX index and the S&P, which is down below. S&P 500, cash index, daily closes. Let me make a big qualification here, and it's a big one. This indicator and its interrelationship S&P and VIX index is only important in bear markets. If you tried to apply it to a bull market, you'd look at me and say, well, you're really dead wrong, Eliades. This does not work. And you're right. It doesn't work in a bull market. But boy, it's like gold in a bear market. Let me show you why. Today, January 10th, Tuesday, as I'm doing this recording, it's around 7.12 p.m. Pacific. That's 10.12 p.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday, January 10th. The VIX index closed today at 20.58. That's right here. What I did was I marked that 20.58 and drew a broad horizontal line to the left at exactly that level, 20.58. And then going back to the beginning of this bear market, 
which began with its high on January 3rd in the S&P with a close of 4796.56. From that point forward to the current time, I would maintain we have been in a bear market. So what we want to look for is every time the VIX index was at this 20.58 level or lower since the bear market began. January 3rd, 2022. Okay, I actually went back another couple of weeks because it occurred all around this topping action for the all-time high. And here's what I did. If a, if it was a series of days, I put this little red rectangle around it, beginning exactly where the first reading of 2058 or lower was registered and ending where the last reading of 20.58 or lower was registered. If it was a single day reading, right here, for example, below the 20.58, I drew a vertical line, a dashed vertical line. There's one here, there's one right here. You notice it slipped just beneath, okay? So, again, single day reading, vertical line. Group of readings, red rectangle. And look at the results. They're fabulous. This one went from December 21st to January 14th. I don't have to ask you whether in retrospect you'd be buying or selling here. Okay, the next one occurred one single day, February 9th, 22. Then we had this group of days beginning on March 25th and ending on April 5th. And they and closed the closing high on March 29th. The next one was another single day reading, occurred on April 20th of 22, and that was right here. And then from April 20th, notice up here, there's the VIX index. There was no reading anywhere near this 20.58 line until August 10th, right here. First reading at that level or lower. And that continued for several days into August 18. And look what was happening with the market. There it is. And from that point, right in here, the VIX index straight up, the market almost straight down. No reading below 20.58 at that level or lower until November 23rd. There's a single day right there. That was a little short-term top. We came down a couple of days, had another rally, and again, a group of two or three days here. Let's see where this begins. November 30th, December 2nd. November 30th right here is where we did our last YouTube update. And look at this. Where do we go from there? Well, the VIX index did not have, as typically happens, a big move to the upside. Usually, you need to see it get above 30 to mark some kind of important bottom in the market. And it never got above 30. And we came back down again. The next reading occurred on December 21st. That's right here. Okay. And then came down, sideways, down. And we moved up, and just yesterday, actually January 6th on Friday of last week, we got a little bit above where we were at this reading. Still did not get down to that 20.58 on the VIX index until today. And of course, today we hit 20.58 by definition. We're using that as the definition for looking back over almost exactly the past year. So, what do you do? Run out, mortgage the house, the wife, the kids, the husband, the whatever, and, and uh, jump in on the short side in the market? No. In fact, one of the things I did on my video update for subscribers today is I cautioned against over-optimism. I guess you can call it cockiness. One is in this business, if one is in this business long enough, and believe me, I've been in it long enough, going back now for, oh, I guess 50 years, just about almost half a century. 
you learn one thing about your market analysis if you've been doing it for a while, and that is don't get cocky. Don't think you found the Pandora's box to the stock market, okay? There are no perfect answers. There's no guarantee that this fabulous indicator is going to work one more time in the next five years. There's no guarantee of any of that. So for you to make some kind of foolish judgment that this is proving to you that you run out and the mortgage everything you have and go short the market, that's a foolish thing to do. You use these as guidelines, as indicators, okay? And the indicator is telling us now that this has been a bearish reading over the past year. Maybe we're turning into a bull market again. Maybe it's not going to work for another year or two. Okay, I doubt that very much, but we, you don't know ahead of time. So I'm just cautioning you to be cautious about your attitudes and your actions that you take about those attitudes in the stock market. Okay, so... This is where we stand with this fabulous indicator. It's been fabulous for a year anyway. Now, I want to go to some projections, which is our stock and trade, and show you the S&P and what it looks like over the short term. Okay, this is the S&P 500 cash index. The offset that I'm using is a 24.2 to 27.6 closing price offset on the S&P. That's the equivalent of about a five-week offset giving nominal 10-week projections. I'm not going to go back and show you how, how great it's been. It's pretty obvious just in the last, what, uh, six months or so what's happened. This was a downside projection right here. This was the bottom right within the projection window. Here's the upside projection right here. Here's the bottom. Here's the top right in the middle of the window, and now we have a downside projection. It's been in effect. I'll show you since when. In fact, I'll show you a clearer picture of these offsets. Okay, just quickly as a general rule, projections are generated. Let's say a downside projection is generated, an initial projection once you close into, you come down into the, what I call the continuum, the gray area. And the projection is confirmed once it exits on the downside. So this projection was confirmed right here, and it called for this price. You understand what I'm saying now? On this day, the projections called for a move down to this level. I'm impressed by that. I don't know if you are. Okay. Now, reverse it. It comes up, goes above the lower part of the continuum right here, and then gets above the upper part of it right here, this projection is confirmed. Preliminarily, it was given back here. It was confirmed here. There you go. Okay. Now, we're talking about the current projection. It moved down into the continuum right here around the middle of December, and right here around December 20th or so, it exited the lower end of the continuum, and continue down a little bit before rallying. So this projection remains very much in effect, and it's the one reason why I have continued bearish since it was given. Yes, despite this rally of the past couple of weeks, this downside projection is still in effect. Now, projections can be invalidated. How? by moving in the opposite direction through completely through the continuum. So if the S&P closes above the upper side of the continuum over the next week or two, then this projection is no longer in effect. Until or unless that happens, this projection remains in effect, and it's calling for 35, 55, 21 to 37, 23, 74. That's a closing price projection for the S&P 500 cash index. In the meantime, we have had this rally. And so we want the projections to tell us shorter term. See, this is just one cycle here. And, and as it turns out, it's been a great cycle for giving the turning points for the last six months or so. A high here, 
a low here, a high here. We don't know about this one yet. But it's just one cycle. It's the nominal 10-week cycle, okay? There are shorter-term cycles that give us shorter-term projections. Let's look at them. We're going to start with the very shortest upsets that we use on the daily charts. This is a this broad, uh, uh, dark blue line of the closing prices, and the red and blue lines are the offsets. This is an offset of 1.75 to two days. Anytime prices cross above the offset, upside projection. Below the offset, downside projection. So this is the shortest offset, the shortest cycle, and it gave this projection up here, okay? Once you get into that projection, you go to the next longer offset, three and a half to four days. Here's the next higher projection right here, this green box. We obviously reached that. You go to the next longer offset, seven to eight days. It's what I call a nominal 20-day projection. And we've reached that. Okay, here's the little green box, the green rectangle that we reached into. The next longer one is 12.1 to 13.8. That's two and a half week equivalent nominal five week projection. Look at this. Today, for the first time, we moved into the projection window. Now, there's still room for higher prices. This projection calls for 3901.22 to 39.96.25. But we are in the projection window, and most importantly, the next longer projection, or the next longer offset, 24.2 to 27.6, that's the first one we showed you with this downside projection, okay? So that remains in effect. If you get above both of these lines, you can invalidate this projection. But now we've learned from our shorter-term offsets that all upside projections have been met at least on a minimal basis. There's still a little more room on that 12.1 to 13.8 we just showed you, okay? And th that's the whole projection picture. We have this downside. We looked at our shorter-term ones to see what the upsides were. We just moved into the upside projection window on the two-and-a-half-week offset, nominal five-week projection today. That's why today is potentially important. Don't have to turn straight down from here. No, we don't have to do that. But we do have lower projections, and all upside projections have been met on a minimal basis. And look at this. I'll show it to you again. Do you see how these things fit together? The price projections I just showed you, and these little red areas and vertical lines, and here we are again in a vertical line. Okay, so that's my update. I wanted to let you know where the technicals for me and the projections for me stand. Again, please let me caution you. This is not your license to go out and mortgage everything you're aware of in your life and take positions on the downside. Reasonable, intelligent speculation, you do as you please. I make no specific recommendations, okay? I try to analyze the market as best I can and pass that information on to you, the YouTube viewers. That's it for now. Have yourselves a happy new year, and I'm sure I'll be talking to you soon. Thanks for watching.